So first of all, I think the main challenge is uh, a challenge and a blessing is working for such a such a big studio, okay, with more than 150 designers. Everything that you do is challenging, and I think the most challenging part is having everyone uh, on the same page. There's always like a problem of uh, communication, making sure that all teams stay uh, on brand and uh, communicate with one another, like their task, showing what they're working on. Um, I think this is probably the most challenging. And obviously, when you work for a company that has 150 million users, then everything that you do is such high in, in high scale. So every small decision that you make as a designer at Wix is always challenging. So I didn't have any experience managing designers before. I used to work uh, in the TV and film industry. So I had, some I had some experience working with creative people. And creative people, it doesn't matter from what field they are, they're mostly the same, okay? You need to keep them creative, but still, uh, you know, working in a full capacity. And it's a, it, that's a different challenge. So no, I didn't manage designers before, but it's, it's, it's the same. For the design team structure, we are uh, 10 teams. So we have 10 teams in Wix's uh, studio. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, three teams working in the marketing department. We have around five teams working on content. Content is basically everything that we give to our users in order for them to have like the most beautiful and stunning website. So it's templates and the product design and the main product that we have, the, the Wix editor and the Wix ADI. In each one of those, uh, in, in those main products, we have a design team. And we also have two in-house uh, video teams that creates amazing uh, 3D work and all the marketing campaigns and uh, illustrations. Basically everything that moves those two teams does uh, do. And yeah, so it's 10 teams. Each team has a manager, but they also have underneath the manager, they have a team leader, mm -hmm. which is usually uh, a, a more experienced or a more seasoned designer. Uh, that it doesn't have like the managerial, managerial authorities, but it's usually somebody the team loves and it helps he or she helps the managers uh, in the day to day task because some teams we are 150 designers, so we have teams as large as other studios. We have a team of 30 designers, that's pretty big. Mm -hmm. So th this team manager needs uh, two or three leaders from his own team to help him or her manage the team. So when the, when the design team is this big, you have to be super organized. I mean, and using design system, it, it helps and it makes life much more easier for everyone, from the, the designers to the developers at the end. So I, I think it's critical. At some point, saving stuff on a Google Drive or on the network, even if the folders are as organized as possible, it, it won't cut, it won't do the job. You need to have a very organized design system and you need to make sure that everyone follows it. Mm -hmm. Especially when the, the company is so big and the design team is so big and you, have, you need to, to be on trend, on, sorry, you need to be on brand. Okay, so the brand, you have a design system. These are the colors, these are the primary colors. These are the fonts that you are using. These are the spacing and heights. And having a, an organized design system, it, it really it makes life much more easier for everyone. Wow. Uh, so the tool we use, well, actually, we don't limit uh, the teams to one specific tool for uh, keeping their tasks and their day-to-day -to -day together. So some of the teams use uh, Jira mm -hmm. by Atlassian because most of the company work with Jira. So it makes much more sense that everybody will work with the same uh, task uh, software, but we also like Trello because it's more visual, more intuitive. I think it's better for designers because it has the thumbnails. It's, it, it's a bit more like Pinterest. Mm -hmm. uh, so m most team will have, in addition to the Jira, they will also have uh, a Trello board, 
which they share with everyone else. So you'll see which, uh, who is working on which task. Uh, we also uh, use our own customly built tools. Uh, because we have so many developers in the company, uh, we, can, we can find out a need, a specific need, and we'll tell them, okay, we need an answer for this. And a developer will say, okay, I got this. And two weeks later, we'll have our own customly built tool. And most importantly, I think, is that we all work with the Wix editor. And this is the most important part. Mm -hmm. All the designers at Wix, they are like the most advanced pro users of our own product. Mm -hmm. And it gives us sort of this liberty because we own the design from A to Z. It means that we, a, a designer will come up with his vision for a landing page or a website. And he will design it and he will build it by himself using the Wix editor. We don't need to develop it externally. We do everything in-house and this is crazy. It gives us so much liberty and it gives us speed in, in creating landing pages and websites and templates. All the templates at Wix are being built using the Wix editor because they are meant to be opened using the Wix editor. the next big thing in web design. So I think anyone who followed my, who, who listened to my talk uh, will know that I don't think anyone can say what the next big trend or the next big thing will be for websites because I, I come across lists of uh, uh, top 20 trends to look for in 2020 and you know it makes us laugh because who can say if, if people, if it's a online and you Google it and you see the 20 trends, then it means it's not going to happen. I mean, it's already a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. And this is why we say we need to create the future. Uh, and, but I think the, well, everyone is talking about mobile. I think that eventually more than 80% of people, they open websites using their, their mobile device. And the changes that we all see in the mobile industry will probably have such a big impact on web design. So I think we'll need to see what they have and then we'll need to adjust and act accordingly. So uh, I talked about uh, design trends uh, and more specifically about the method that we implement in our studio that's called uh, trend thinking. And basically this method means that Again, as I said, we don't Google uh, top 20 trends for 2020 and design accordingly. Uh, us being such a huge company and such a, a, a big studio, so we say, okay, we need to influence the, the, web, the future of web design ourselves. And what I'm talking about in my talk is that we look for different sources of inspiration and they can be literally anything, okay, from politics to the environment mm -hmm. and we draw different conclusions from it and we make them more relevant to web design and the digital world and from that we implement it in our design and our templates and once we implement something in our templates because so many people rely on our templates and our product for their design mm -hmm. so by that we are influencing the future of web design because from one template thousands, tens of thousands of websites are created. Most of them, they keep, the, they keep the, the, the main design elements of this template. I mean, we, people call it a template. We like to think about, they are fully functional websites, mm -hmm. these templates are. Mm -hmm. They are design suggestions. Calling something a template, it's a bit downgrading. But people are taking this ready-made website that the top designers created for them, and they use it as their own. So by using our designs, we know that we are making a difference.